around the world is something that very few companies can uh, promise and guarantee to artists. So, yeah, traveling around Europe was beautiful. Um, 12 countries in 12 weeks. That sounds crazy, but we did it really slowly and I did lots of painting on the way and practiced lots of my painted techniques that I've been learning from Colour in Your Life and um, all the plein air and doing the beautiful buildings and the watercolour. Not that I'm going to show you any just yet, but maybe one day I'll be brave enough to, to show you all some of these uh, beautiful creations that I've been making or learning how to do. But you, Graham, have been traveling as well. And, and I know that there's been a few months uh, break from having a conversation with Graham because we've been in two separate time zones. Uh, but you went to um, America to record some fantastic artists back in July. Uh, I know you went to Colorado and Utah and, and I also know that we're starting to release these videos on, on YouTube and release them to the world over these. We've released a couple and we're releasing a few more over the next couple of weeks. Do you wanna uh, go through and tell us about some of those artists that you've been uh, enjoying this, your time with? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a great trip. It was probably one of the better trips that we've had to the States, not that they all haven't been great because they have, but I think just seeing the scenery in Colorado, particularly in Utah, was just spectacular. I mean, just, just amazing. But the first artist we actually filmed was in Colorado and it was a place called Central City. And we filmed a gentleman called Steve Grip. And Steve looked like another brother from another mother. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Very, very similar to me, but uh, we went to one of the uh, the galleries um, in um, Central City, and it's actually where um, uh, Doc Holiday, Holiday and Wyatt Earp from the OK Corral, he actually died. Uh, very, very famous um, uh, American cowboys, I suppose you could say. So he actually died in that area, and they've got a Doc Holiday bar, and it's an old town that goes back probably the 1820s, 1830s, when the gold rushes came through and it's and they've kept it much the same. It's it's a great place, really, really wonderful place. And Steve was a fabulous man, um, watercolour artist, really talented guy, lots of fun. He was just a, lots of fun to be with. I think he wants to get down to Australia and some workshops at, at some stage. So and that's I think that's probably the benefit of what we're doing as well is that we're meeting these really talented people. Um, and I would like to try and get them down to Australia at some stage and um, get some workshops organised. Uh, you know, it's a rare opportunity that you can get to be with people of this calibre. Um, you know, when you see their shows as they're released, you'll perfectly understand what I'm talking about. But um, so after Steve, uh, we went down to uh, Lorraine Watry and... Uh, the rain, uh, wonderful up in Colorado once again, and uh, she does she does um, wildlife scenes and actually did a picture for us uh, of a, a wildlife scene, of course, and uh, very, very uh, uh, photorealistic. Uh, she's won a number of awards. Uh, we had a really fun day with her. She was a lovely lady, and her son came along and helped and helped us out. So it was a bit of a family affair, but uh, lovely people as well. And then uh, from there we went on to Utah and just outside of Salt Lake City and we filmed Jeffrey Blackburn. And unfortunately we were right there in the middle of summertime. We've sort of got to plan these trips from now on. I'm, I'm going to do two trips next year to the States, but it's going to be in April and in October <laughs> instead of in the dead of the winter or in the dead of summer. really does get hot. But Jeffrey's, uh, Jeffrey's an amazing guy. He's just a freak of a human being. I mean, he's... Him 1700 hours to do one painting that is three feet by two feet yeah i mean and he, he magnifying glass wow. and it's just it, it, it's incredible to, to see his work you look at it and you say that's a photograph it's got to be a photograph um and it just lives by himself you know he's got, got his little house got his studio and he sort of potters around and Lovely, lovely little guys. He was, he was great to be with. And you have something to say? 
can I just clarify? Did you say 1,700 hours on one painting and using a magnifying glass with a paintbrush to paint it? Yeah, yeah. You probably would pull the magnifying glass down and literally to do that amount of work, that's like a day, almost a day. Oh. It's bizarre, I know, but you sort of look, you look at the work and you sort of go, and, then, and they're just magnificent paintings. Uh, some, of the, some of the most amazing landscapes I have ever seen in my life. You sort of go, God, this is incredible. And so, um, does he use oil or was it pastel or acrylic? What's the oil painting? Um, but when you when when Jeffrey's show comes out, you'll you'll get an idea of it's you can't you can't really describe it. It's like you could just simply walk into the painting, and the way he uses his lights and everything else is just like God. But I mean, like I said, this trip there was everybody was just amazing. They were all top of their game artists. I mean, about some of the best in the country. I mean, and that's the that's. You know, that's the, the calibre of artists that we've got coming to us. You know, and in saying that as well, I mean, Colour on Your Life is not about academia or elitism by any means. And, you know, I want to give everybody an opportunity to be part and parcel of what we're doing. And, you know, we've got some artists that are at the top of their game. And we've got other artists that are, you know, coming through or starting. That You know, I mean, we don't take everybody, as you will know. I mean, there's some artists I just say, look, you're just not ready. Um, you don't have enough time under your belt to be able to do this. Um, you know, there, and there's different. I've seen Martin for a start, and Justine's a fantastic woman that's been so much with her health, and her art is vibrant and it's happy, but it's nothing like like Jeffrey Blackburn's. They're, they're 180 degrees apart. And the fact is that um, Colour in Your Life is, is there as a platform for everybody. Um, you, you know, whether you, whether you take an hour or two hours to do a painting or whether you take two months to do a painting, the idea is that the, these people are there to be exposed to the world, to tell their story and to leave that legacy of their creativity behind, you know, when we go and we're all going to go, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Um, the next person in Utah was, um, we went on to see a gentleman in a place called Alpine, a really pretty area in, um, in Utah. And... It's a gentleman called Brian Mark Taylor. Once again, it's like you just sort of sit in his studio, a magnificent home. He's got uh, four little children, beautiful wife. Um, but the guy's just completely dedicated and focused on, on his craft. Uh, he's become really successful. He's only 40 and he's been painting basically since he was 20 years of age. But once again, a, a, plein, a plein air artist. But the quality of the work is just... You, I just sit in the studio and it's just, you're watching them and sort of say, he makes it look so easy. <laughs> but a uh, wonderful young man, uh, you know, incredibly talented. And, um, you know, we just have a fancy time with him. And he's got his own DVDs out and videos. And, you know, we, uh, we also, you know, part of what we do as well is that we want to, to talk about and mention the other companies that we work with. I mean, Eric Rhodes from Streamline Publishing. Eric's a great guy, does a fantastic job with his plein air conventions. Or plein air conventions um, and really really promotes the art to such a degree with these magazines it's just wonderful what they do also you know whatever we can do to help their businesses that's what we do also uh, then we went on to see Andrew Smith down in Lehigh which was um, south of Denver I'm just, trying, just trying to remember where we are most of the time <laughs> as you know and um, Andrew was a sculptor but like God, his mind's his mind was somewhere else at the best of times. And he would just, he had like, the American pickers would just love his house because you would go into these sheds and he had old bikes and old planes and stuff off ships and old wheels and chains and trinkets and glass. And it was just amazing and just all over the place. He had them all little, little segmented in all these little sheds and he'd sort of say, I need that. And then over there we actually filmed it together a section of this giant sculpture that he's doing for the Children's Museum in Chicago. And it was enormous. And you sort of crank one crank and you got all these drive shafts together and little universal joints and the whole stuff is just amazing. And you just the kids can come in and they can crank this one little crank 
which is really easy to do. Everything sort of just glides perfectly. And all of a sudden, the whole thing comes to life. And the little balls roll down tubes and spirals, and then they make their way back up again. And the kids can stand there and crank this thing. And wonder, it's just like, my God. <laughs> but, a, but an amazing mind. I mean, his, his mind was going at a 1,000 miles an hour. He's just one of those guys that you sort of, you, you, it would be difficult to get inside his head. But what we did anyway, for the time that we were there. Uh, then we went on to see Dean and Milcam in Vernal. And Vernal's regarded as a dinosaur area. And um, we went out to the Dinosaur National Monument, um, Sophia and I. And that's what, a great part about what we do with our job is the fact that we get to see these amazing people in these incredible places. And that 150 million year old slab that had been lifted up that they'd actually formed a museum around. And it was all of these ancient brontosaurs, a um, whole bunch of different, I mean, massive dinosaurs in this huge block was, I don't know, it was like 500 yards, 600 yards long and about, oh, probably at least 50 yards high, maybe even more. Just, just fossils everywhere. You see their, their heads and their teeth and their necks and their legs. are just an amazing place. Uh, and Vernal, very, it's in the middle of Utah, very dry, but just beautiful scenery. I mean, there's a, there's a, a magnificent beauty about the starkness of the places. It's just, just incredible. And then we went down to see um, Serena Supley. Supley. Sorry, Serena. <laughs> I still can't get it right. Uh, in a place called Moab. And once again, it's uh, an amazing place. I mean, the the rock, it's its like you've, you've stepped onto Mars in some of these places. I mean, the heat in the summertime is just stifling. I mean, it just grips you as you get out of the car. And we went to a place called... Is it a bit like, uh, you know, Northern Australia, like um, the Bungle Bungles and Ayers Rock and Northern Territory? Similar, yeah, similar. Western Australia, the police. But, but, but even, even more so, that we went to Archers National Park after we'd filmed Serena, and Soph and I spent half a day there. I mean, you could have wandered around this place for ages, and that's where all the arches formed by the water and the rain over, you know, millions of years. And uh, the, the, the scenery is just, it, it's mind-boggling. You've got these massive rocks. It's a little bit like Monument Valley but they just simply come out of the ground. You can go up and stand underneath them, you park your car, and literally you look up and they're hundreds and hundreds of feet high, and they're just, just plopped in the middle of nowhere. There's a stream running past, but the colours, the, the colours, it just, it just mind-blowing place. I mean, you could, you could spend, and there's petroglyphs all over the place, the, the Indian paintings, you know, because obviously the Indians were there a long, long time before we ever got there. The, the um, I think the unfor- what was that again? Native Americans. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the thing that we do these days, and that's that's a good part about Australia at the moment, is because we've only got 24 million people. But America's got 40 million people, and they have some of the best national parks in the world. I've been to a lot of them, but unfortunately, in the end, we love everything to death, and there's just so many people. I mean, they're, they're kept to, to certain areas. You can't wander off and you wouldn't want to anyway if you wandered off into those places you would die i mean you would die of exposure and thirst within within no time whatsoever i mean they're very very harsh areas but this the, the the beauty the magnificence of them is just you you stand there and you can feel your mouth go down as you look around and it, for miles and miles and miles you just see these monuments wandering into the haze the sky just comes down and it's the haze and you go wow and i always think back when I'm in places like that, of what the, the Native Americans, you know, what their life was like. I mean, the, the cleanliness and the beauty and, you know, the fact that, you know, we're there now and the technology is what it does, but, you know, it's such a shame. And then from there, we, we left Serena um, and we drove on to, to Kansas. And there's <laughs> not a lot, you hear those stories about Kansas and it's part of the Tornado Alley. Um, you know, it's sort of like, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. But you, you drive along and it's just like flat fields for miles and miles and miles and miles. 
So you'd be driving along and I'd look at Safe and she'd look at me and she'd fall asleep for an hour. And she'd wake up and go, nothing's changed. And I said, yep, nothing's changed. <laughs> and it's like six or seven hours later. Yeah, exactly the same. <laughs> fall asleep. <laughs> but we got to, uh, we got to um, Lawrence and uh, John and Anne um, Halsey. Um, a lovely couple. They're both artists. They have a fantastic studio, amazing studio, wonderful studio. Anne's on one side, John's on the other. Uh, and both incredibly talented people. So just a lovely couple to be with. They were, they were just great. It was just a really fun time. And they live, they have a beautiful property. And John, and they've got a lake on their property. So John actually paints the lake and the, the scenes and you see his work as well. And, um, you know, these, these are top-notch artists. I mean, these are guys at the top of their game. Um, you know, they've got works in major museums with major collectors. And, um, and you just, once again, to spend time, um, one of the great joys of my life is to be able to step into these people's studios. You know, that's why I'd like, as long as my health holds up, to continue to be able to, to, to do that because you just step in there and you look at it and you go, here's somebody that knows what they're doing. Just a privilege it really is. So. And then there was another gentleman that we've got um, uh, coming up, uh, William Dunn. William's a lovely guy. He's in Pasadena, which is um, south of San Francisco. Um, uh, great. I, mean, I generally stay with one of my best mates when I'm in um, San Francisco. Uh, and basically, it was just a step and a jump down to, to see William and um, uh, he paints the San Francisco street scenes and does an amazing job. And we, uh, his show just went up recently and um, William got 6,000 views in six days. And it's, it's continuing to climb. I'm not, I'm not sure what it is at the moment. But it's that type of thing. I mean, all of these guys do workshops and the beauty about putting all of this together for these people is that not that some of them need workshops because they're just, they're just right at the top of their game. But uh, this enables them to be able to tell the rest of the world who they are and what they do. Their students can pass it along. If somebody wants to see their work or their paintings, I mean, there it is, this digital documentary, this fantastic marketing tool that they can then use themselves to basically tell the rest of the world what they're doing, apart from what we do. And, you know, as you know, we are out there marketing this extensively. Every chance we get, we're trying to put somewhere so somebody gets to see it. So, uh, not that, you know, we're ever slack at all because that's part and parcel of our job is to mark these things that continue to be seen for years and years to come. Yes, and you see that um, other artists that we have filmed uh, years ago are up to 300,000 views and more. And you just you understand why why it's so successful, why video is so successful, why it's so good to invest in this kind of marketing because it's not going to go away. The skills that these mm. artists like Jeffrey Blackburn and John Hussey, they, they, Hussey, they, um, their skills are not going to go away. I learn from their skills and everybody learns from their skills and, and then I can go back in 10 years' time and relearn those particular lessons. And what I also like about our show, and you have mentioned it, and you have to apologise, I've got these horse flies flying around me, <laughs> trying to bite me. Um, they, even the ones that aren't, you know, haven't been painting for 40 years, they all have something special to show. You would think that after 220 shows that we would have covered all the different techniques that you can do in, in creating things, but it feels like there is an inf infinite amount of techniques to show and artists of mm. all, all ranges have their own particular technique that they can share and that we can learn from. And that's one of the really exciting things I like about Colour in Your Life. Yes, we can show the Jeffrey Blackburn, but we can also show the artists that, that have, you know, five different awesome techniques that as a novice I can learn from and, and I, you know, that's one of the million things I love about colour in your life and, and what we can provide for these artists. Yeah, well, at the end of next month, uh, when Soph and I go to Victoria and get back, it'll be 240 shows we'll have filmed and edited in the, in the time we've been. That's in six countries. Yeah, 200. So, uh, and there's, there's, there's literally hundreds of thousands.
people out there across the world. So I hope that we can we can do this with now R Richard Sturgles and Al Freeman, uh, our team in California. Uh, they just they just finished filming a, a, a lady over there. They're on their way to Puerto Vallarta um, a couple of weeks, and they're going down to Mexico to film some scenes down there. And then they come back. Uh, we've got other artists across the United States that potentially want to fly in to Southern California and be filmed down there, which actually helps us out because so far I need at least eight people in a demographic area before we can get on a plane and, and come out. But because we've got the team there, those people can come down to the, the Green Art House in Southern California and basically the guys can film them down there. Um, everybody's happy. Uh, they take their paintings with them. They take shots of their studios and we put the shows together in Southern California. So we've got all of this sort of opening up. We've, we've got Ian and Leon in the UK as well, which are doing a great job over there too. Yeah, great. So that, that opens up. Are you, hang on, stop talking because I can't hear you. Okay. So that opens up a whole new ball game. That means that we can um, get any artists in America to fly in to the greenhouse and they can record because I know, because I'm the one that has to, well, I'm not, I don't have to, but I'm the one that answers all the emails from hundreds of eager artists who want to be filmed. And I'm the one that has to say, I'm really sorry we can't go to Washington because there's only one artist there at the moment that needs to be filmed. But I can tell those Washington artists, if you can get your fare to go to the greenhouse, we can film you there and that way you can be on Colour in Your Life. I love that development, Graham. That is so exciting. What a great next step for the for the progress of Colour in Your Life. And good on Rich and Al. That's yeah. awesome. I can't wait to see their, their first video. I think it's going to add a whole new dimension to Colour in Your Life. Yeah, Richard's a fantastic guy. He is so much fun. He is unbelievably talented as well. I mean, he's a traditionally trained uh, artist from the Chicago Art Institute, which is one of the toughest art institutes probably on the planet. Um, but uh, he's a graduate of that and uh, just the loveliest man and got the best personality and just loves life and loves the world. And he is the perfect person to be the host for the show there. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited because uh, it opens up a whole new, as you just said, it opens up a whole new genre of what we're doing so that, you know, potentially the same thing can happen with the guys in the UK and they're, but they're, they're actually filming month as well. Uh, they've got somebody coming in from France. So somebody from France is actually making their way into England uh, and then they're going to be doing the same. They're going to be heading off into other countries to be able to do that as well. Um, so it's, it's exciting and potentially we can get people in uh, Middle East, We've even got a gentleman at the moment. Now, this is exciting, and I know that you don't know this, but um, we've got, I won't mention his name or, or what he does, but he's actually in Israel at the moment, and he owns uh, an artist paint company. He manufactures artist paint. And he's in Israel right now talking to people about getting colour in your life into Israel, onto the TV, and for us to be filming Israeli artists um, for the Middle Eastern area. So that's pretty cool too. I don't want to say any more than that because it's all in the pipeline right now, but that's just amazing stuff. Yeah, it is. It's, it's amazing how Colour in Your Life slowly comes, uh, seeps through to all these different countries and the, the world seems so much smaller um, once we start mm. you know, talking about Israel and India and UK and, and Sweden and, and France and all these different places. Because I, I also know that while I was away, we, we struck a deal with a, a, a company in Germany who um, is able to put our show on uh, TV in Spain, in Denmark, in Switzerland, Germany, and... Norway. Norway, all right, Norway. So that's, that's you know, we're, we're starting to cover Europe now with, with um, people who are are being touched by this fantastic show. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And, it's, and, and once again, it gives the artists the exposure that they would never. It's, you know, I, I don't know if, the, if there's anybody else with our business model on the planet. I'm not that I'm aware of it. Uh, there, there may be, but I haven't come across it at all. 
Um, and then to, to do what we do is a Herc Herculean effort under any circumstances because the amount of traveling that Soph and I have done, and then as you know, the technology that goes behind everything that we put together, you know, I think Jenny, as our IT person, ex-executive from Yahoo, Joe that does all of our other uh, transcribing, pulling information through the systems, safe editing, you being a, an arts manager, a very good one too. Just a great group of people that's, uh, that's formed this, this team that uh, is, you know, so far doesn't seem to be stoppable we'll after what I can see. <laughs> As you said the other day at our meeting, there, there's no other business that I know of, in, that we know of in the world that is doing all the bis all the things that we're doing. We're, we're quite unique and um, yeah. very exciting time because we're managing to stay ahead of the technology or along with the technology and, and getting us out there. And, and you just, you know, you just started as a, as a, an artist that wanted to uh, be able to live your life sustainably with a sustainable arts practice and and this is something now that you're able to provide to so many other artists in the world who want to do the same they just want to live from their art and and they should be able to that's that's one of the most important things yeah just don't be a starving artist um you know i i just got another four contracts in yesterday i'm not sure if you know about that from my licensing agents overseas so that two arrive in the morning and another two arrive in the afternoon um, and they just continue to, they're getting contracts literally all over the world for me now. So it's just amazing. You might have to get, you might have to employ someone to help you paint. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> well, it's a good point, but it's just like, it does the yellows and does the reds. Yeah. And actually, we might, a lot of people out there might be wondering what this is here. Well, I just got a, I got a skin cancer cut out yesterday. And uh, that's what happens when you're sort of a, a white guy with my skin that lives in one of the hottest countries in the world, plus the fact that I surfed for years and years when I was a kid. So, right there, make sure if you're in the sun, cover up because <laughs> you'll get chunks. You'll get chunks carved out of you as you get older. So, and so you'll end up being a sculpture in yourself with all these little holes and and crevices on you. My dad's my dad's 84, and he looks like Mowgli out of Lord of the Rings. They've got chunks out of his ears and his nose and his cheeks and his lips. It's like God. <laughs> so he's not. He's not going to make GQ. I can assure you of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Graham, we might wrap it up from there. That's a that's a great that's a great amount of information that we've shared, and and it's been lovely to share it with you, viewers all across the world. We really appreciate you continuing to watch our candid conversations and to keep sharing the news about colour in your life and telling people how great it is. You can watch it in so many different places around the world, but you can watch it on YouTube, on Vimeo, on, on we can get the link on Facebook and all the different social media places. If you be, subscribe to our YouTube channel, you get it emailed to you in your inbox. If you're a member, you also get it emailed to you in your inbox and Oh, we're also on smart TV applications and we're, in, we're mm -hmm. on TV on 13 different countries in the world. So I'm not sure where you are seeing this video. I'd l actually, I'd love to know if you're, why don't, when you watch this video, if you can just write in the comments, I'm watching from Nebraska or I'm watching from Sweden. It'd be cool to know where you're all from. So, you know, give us a shout out. But until next that time, wasn't sweet. what was that? It wasn't a Swedish accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not very good at accents. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. That's about as close as I can get to a Swedish accent. Okay. <laughs> but in, until next time, don't forget to put some colour in your life and, and, and keep watching. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Yeah.